So today we're going to be painting this little yellow bird and these fairy flowers. So right here we have our sketch. It's up in Patreon if you're interested, along with the full tutorial. But let me walk you through how I painted this. So I transfer the image onto the paper, and this is an Aquafine watercolor paper, Dale Rowney. It is 250 millimeter or 9.8 inches square. The traditional kind of watercolor paper, 300 gram, 140 pound, cold pressed, but it is not the typical because it is 100% cellulose. Normally I like to paint on arches or Artistico Fabriano, but, and that's 100% cotton, but this is 100% cellulose and I like it. So I'll be talking to you, I'll be talking with you about the qualities of why I like it. So in front of us, you can see the supplies that I'm using, and you can see that I have two sets of brushes. I have a really nice set. This is a silver black velvet. I love them, but I'm also very protective of them. And then I have three little cheapies, which I use for the detail work, and also for using with this new Echoline white watercolor paint that I picked up. This is a very opaque paint. It actually is a lot like like acrylic paint, even though it's watercolor. And you can see on my palette that I have chips. That's because this Echoline stuck to the palette, it didn't come up easy, and it chipped away the enamel from my palette. So now I will use it in a little ceramic bowl. These are the colors I'm using. I recommend all of them, I love them. You'll notice that I have a very mixed palette of Daniel Smith, Winsor Newton, and M. Graham. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about several of the pigments while I'm painting, but I'm specifically going to be talking about cobalt turquoise light and cobalt teal blue and comparing them. I ran out of the cobalt teal blue. It's a Daniel Smith and I can't find it here in Korea. I know there's a store, I just don't know where the store is. It moved because of Corona. So I needed to get some cobalt turquoise for my painting, so I went and got some Winsor Newton. And I'll be talking about these differences because they are very different. You do need to have two glasses of water, one for cleaning your brush, the extra pigment off, and one for you know getting just uh, pure water as you're painting on your, on your paper. This right here is the new Winsor & Newton that I bought, and it's a beautiful color. I just wanted you to see that it's beautiful, <laughs> of course. Okay, so let's begin painting. Um, so I'm spritzing the paper, and I'm being very careful to avoid any area where that bird is, because I'm going to be dropping in the blues of the background. And when I say the blues, I'm going to be using phthalo blue, which is highly staining, and this turquoise, cobalt turquoise, which is not so staining. By the way, you just saw me push that paper down. I want you to notice that I did not tape it down at all. I didn't have to, and that's one of the beauties of this paper. It is amazing at, for many reasons. It's inexpensive. Anyway, I'll talk about that later. That first blue that you saw me put down, the one on the upper part, that is the last little bit of my Daniel Smith cobalt teal blue. And right now I'm using the cobalt turquoise. It's a little bit different color and it functions very differently. It is rather opaque. And guys, if you're enjoying this and would like more detailed instruction on color palettes, color mixing, artist tips, or guided instruction while you paint, maybe you're interested in my Patreon couple paint. And you're probably wondering, what is couple paint? Well, couple paint is much like the paint and sip, except I don't talk about the sip. And two people are simultaneously painting together part of a picture or part of a story, but they're each painting on their own canvases. And right now you're looking at the Timmy and Tammy Cap couple paint, and this one is done in acrylic. So for just a few dollars every month, 
a couple, and this could be friends, family, neighbors, or those darling little honeys, can enjoy the couple paints in my library and the two new uploads that I give every month. And they're usually in acrylic, but sometimes they're in watercolor. And if you're interested in this kind of paint socializing, I will have the Patreon link below. Even though both of them are labeled as semi-transparent, the Daniel Smith Cobalt Teal Blue is much lighter. It travels better in water. If you spritz a little bit of water on the paper and then drop in some of the Cobalt Teal Blue, the Daniel Smith, it travels. You will see that the Cobalt Turquoise of Winsor & Newton does not travel. And right now, this is the Daniel Smith Thalo Blue Green Shade, and it is an adventure. It takes trips. And so you drop a little bit in and it travels a lot. So you can see that it could easily overpower the cobalt, both of them. I felt though when I painted the first painting with the cobalt teal blue, the Daniel Smith, and this Daniel Smith uh, thalo blue, that even though the thalo blue traveled more, there was still a lot of travel with the cobalt teal and so I got a nicer blend of color. And because that turquoise, cobalt turquoise, isn't blending so well, I am spritzing on just a little bit more paint and trying to get the colors to flow a little bit. But I'm also, when I'm, when I tipped that paper, I was very careful not to get any blue onto the belly of that bird. And if, I get any blue on the belly of that bird or anywhere on that bird, I'm going to lift it off immediately. And as long as the paper is very wet, I can lift up even the staining phthalo blue. While it's in a lot of water, it does lift quite well. Okay, and right now I'm lifting. The reason I'm lifting these little spots are th those spots are where the fairy flowers are going to be. And I don't want any kind of staining blue underneath because if you put yellow on top of any color of blue, you're going to get, now if the blue is dry, you're not going to get as green of a color, but it's going to be a, kind of a dirty color. And I want this painting to be very bright and have vibrant colors as pure as possible and so I don't want to have a blue stain underneath. And there I had a little blue on the tail and I lifted that. So I am taking the phthalo blue and I am just touching in some spots of color and right now I'm building up color. So the color that I'm dropping in is mostly where the fairy flowers are going to be. So each of the fairy flower is going to be white and the petals will form a V and in that V is where I'm going to be dropping in the blues. Mostly the phthalo blue up directly in the, in the point of the V, but the color will diffuse out as it goes. So right now I'm just building up a little bit of that color and I will put layer on layer on layer and each layer will get darker. And here you can see I've gone pretty dark because my paper is quite dry in that area. I put in a, a V of color. Then I take my brush and it's quite damp. And I push the brush towards that explosion of color, not away from it. And that means I'm keeping the color, that explosion of color, in that V area. And then I drop in a little bit more pigment and let those colors run. And I'm not getting a hard line that way. So I'm just building up these little V's here and there. Not too many little V's under each of the flowers or the prospective flowers. The further away that the flowers are, the lighter that shadow underneath is going to be. And that's why you see me putting a little bit more of the cobalt turquoise in the distant flowers and in the closer flowers I'm going to have more intensity in those in those shades. 
or in those shadows. And now let's talk a lot. Well, we'll talk about the paper in a minute. Okay, so I'm flicking in a bit of color. And you know how people tap their uh, brush on a pencil. Well, I did it on my finger, but I couldn't control where the spatters went. And so I flipped over the brush, and now I'm flicking it. And wow, guys, this is a way to really control uh, very limit where those speckles are going to be. And you just tap a little bit. I... I was pretty happy with the results. Now my paper was getting a little bit too dry. I thought those colors were going to run better, but they didn't. So I popped in a little bit more moisture. And again, I want to talk about this paper. This is really incredible paper. It's not taped down, and you'll see it's not buckling either. So as soon as I sprayed it initially, I it was starting to buckle a little bit. I just pushed it down, and as I put some paint on, it just, that water, the, I don't know, the pressure, seemed to hold it flat. And I let it dry overnight. I didn't put any kind of hair dryer on it or any kind of heat. I let it dry naturally overnight, and the next day when I woke up, it had just the slightest bit of curl on the edges, curl outward. It was convex. And I just thought I was really impressed. And I've used this paper before, but I will certainly use it again. So now it's time to paint this little bird. And obviously, I didn't clean my brush as well as I could. I cleaned it, but it must be that there was a hint of blue in the fibers. And so you can see that it's the yellow is actually a little bit green. Surprise, surprise, oh my goodness. But if you look at my reference photo, it is yellow. So even though um, it appears to be a little bit green, it's not as green as one might think. And I'll just say one thing about my camera lens. It seems like my camera lens is picking up more green than what I saw in real life. So that's also a difference. This color that I'm using right now is Quinn Gold by Daniel Smith, and I will swear by it. It is a beautiful color. I love it. It's very transparent. I can use it for animals and flowers and for shadows. And right now I'm using it as a shadow because it's a little bit darker than the yellow. Um, it's really a beautiful color. Blends beautifully, and it's a single pigment. Uh, most of the colors in my palette are single pigments. And that means I can blend them without the fear of getting kind of weird colors. So here I'm hoping to pick up a bit of the pigment off of the belly of my little bird. And that will create some different textures. Because if you have a solid yellow bird, you're going to have a solid flat bird. It's not going to have any kind of dimensionality to it. And even though those wings are very wet, still very damp, and I'm not getting specific texture, I'm building up the color. And so later I can put in a thin line, and the line will look really natural there. Okay, it's time to paint our little fairy flowers, the centers of them. How I'm doing this is I'm dipping into that very, very clear water and dampening my paper. Now, I'll tell you that the blue is almost perfectly dry. It's still faintly damp in some areas. I was a little anxious to paint, and when I was painting the yellow bird, the paper was very damp also. So right now, I'm dampening the paper in larger swirls and then dropping in a little bit of yellow. And that yellow is also a traveler and the yellow is kind of exploding up. I'm hoping that I painted enough of a clear area of water around so that I don't get a hard edge. And you can see that I did tap up a little bit of the water that 
was traveling, the yellow was traveling too far, and I wanted to control it. So each time I am dipping in other colors, and I'm using a little bit deeper pigment, or more pigment. So this is my Quin Gold again. It makes great lines, great shadows. The pin feathers do stand out more with this, with against the yellow. It's really nice. And if you feel like this shoulder on the little bird is pretty dry, if you feel like you're dropping in too much pigment, you can just take a damp brush like I'm doing right now and lift it or push it around, distribute it. Okay, now let's try this echo line. This is a uh, it's called liquid watercolor. And this is the first time I've used it. Well, actually the second time because I painted one picture of this fairy of this yellow bird with the fairy flowers. And I got halfway through, turned off the camera, forgot to turn it back on. So this is my second painting of my fairy flowers and the bird. So you'll see that I am not using my silver black velvets because that would be disaster. <laughs> I'm just using a cheapy brush. And when I'm putting those little flicks of white down, I am pushing the brush down pretty hard and then lifting so that I have a taper. I don't have to push really hard because these are quite soft fibers on my brushes, even though they're cheapies. The near uh, petal, I'm going to paint, uh, <laughs> the near petal I'm going to make sure is much more opaque. I'm putting down more white, making sure that it's really a clear petal and it's wider. It's just to give a sense of depth. It's like this is near and it's brighter and there's more shadow in those areas. So, you know, I realized I didn't count the number of petals I just painted. Um, but if we have a traditional botanical, we would have to have a specific number of petals. Some flowers have only five petals, some have seven odd numbers, even numbers. I don't care for this one. I just want it to look nice. So long tapering petals and the ends need to be very thin. Um, if you paint from the end of the petal towards the flower, you're probably going to drop a bead of paint and that would not look good. So paint from the flower outward and it should look really nice. Okay, so I have my white in and the white isn't dry yet and that's okay. <laughs> I am now intensifying the colors, and I need to intensify the colors more or less under those petals. So I want a little bit more contrast between the white petals and the blue background. And because my phthalo blue traveled so much, it's quite dominant. So I'm putting in a little bit more of the cobalt turquoise just to brighten things up a bit. Add more of that sea green look. And like I said, I'm doing it on the south or the lower side of those flowers. Just heightening the color of the petals. A little bit under where the branch is going to be. Our little bird has to stand on a branch, so that branch needs a little shadow too. And if you get too much paint, just take a damp brush and push the paint back into the little V of the fairy flower. I 
Okay, so it's time to paint the little beak. I'm using the same colors as I did for our little bird, but at the last minute, I take in some Daniel Smith, no, 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 this is Windsor Newton Quinn Magenta. The Windsor Newton Quinn Magenta is brighter, clear, much more beautiful, and so, yeah, it makes a really lovely kind of reddish look with, in combination with the Quinn Gold and Quinn Magenta, those two make a kind of red, bright, very transparent color. I am also using that color eventually on these little stamens on the flowers. Right now this is a probably new gamboge. And I just touched in a little bit of the azo orange. I didn't use hardly any azo orange and if you don't have it that's fine. It's a very bright color by M. Graham. And just a few flicks of the azo orange. And then I will mix in a little bit of the Queen Magenta. Just for that little bit of, just a pop of color. And I don't think I do it now, I think I'll do it in a bit. So now let's work on that bill, the, the beak again, because the beak has dried. So this is a bit of Quinn Magenta. And Quinn Gold. Probably more Quinn Gold than Quinn Magenta. Uh, this one doesn't have any Quinn Magenta yet. So I build that eye up in layers. I don't do it all at once. I did the outside and then um, everything but the pupil, the first layer. And I'm doing the first layer of our little branch too. And this I'm using pure Quinn Gold. And you can see on the areas where I had the blue underneath, the color just isn't as nice. So I'm tens intensifying the color, the Quinn Gold, by using just a, a stronger pigment, less water. My little stems are all going to be Quinn Gold. I might outline later or I might put in a little bit of Quinn Magenta along the sides to get my shadows. We will, wor we will worry about that later. And here I'm bringing in the Quinn Magenta. And those are the little feet. Bright. Um, so far in our picture we have predominance of blue and yellow and white. We need something to attract the eye. So the bill is a little bit not bright enough orange yet to really pop. And so now when I put in the Quinn Magenta, the feet are really popping. Well, we don't want people to stare only at the feet. We want people to look elsewhere. So we'll have to build up a, some other color elsewhere. So the eye, I don't have any kind of black in my palette. I do, but I didn't use it. So this black was created with uh, Quinn Magenta and my blues, Thalo Blue. And I think I put in a little bit of the Carbazzoli Violet. And this is where I put in the Quinn Magenta for popping a little color in our fairy flowers. And these colors are from the bird and they're in the environment and this is called creating harmony in your picture. When you have something from the main object also in your environment, this is good painting. So I'm putting a little bit of the Quinn Magenta along the stem just for the shadow. Just some little highlights. You'll notice that the Quinn Magenta is more or less in the center of our painting. 
So I'll put in a few flicks of stamen in the flowers, maybe along the stem itself, the beak eventually, and the feet. And that's where the quin magenta is. That's in the center of our picture, and that is what attracts the eye. So here I'm mixing up a much stronger blue, and again I put in the, the Carbazoli Violet with the Quin Magenta and the blue to get quite a dark purple. And these colors are still somewhat transparent. It's not a, a very opaque color. So a lot of the colors in my palette I'm using that, that I use are transparent. The reason I chose them. So now that my stem shadow has dried a little bit, I'm just intensifying the colors with a little bit more of the Quinn magenta and Quinn gold combination. I just love that in this painting. It looks great. Okay, now so it's time to pop in a little bit more white. When we are finishing our pictures, one of the final stages is to up the contrast. And the contrast might be, you know, the darker colors and then the whites. And so I'm using that Ecoline watercolor, liquid watercolor one more time to put in just a few more accents on some of the petals or on the buds or along the stems just little spots of white here and there to give a sense of finish and to hype the contrast. Sometimes I'm thinking I want a little bit more point on some of my fairy flower petals. And again, you can see that I'm starting from the inside of the flower, moving out because I can get that thin tapered line as I'm lifting the tip of my brush as I stroke it along the paper. A few white stamens just to Pop some highlights in the mirror area. A few white flicks on the feathers itself. That adds a little bit of lightness to the wings too, as if they're catching the light. And I felt that white was a little bit too dominant and it needed more contrast, so I mixed in some of the Quinn Magenta, Quinn Gold combination. We're getting some pin feather definitions. And there we have it, my two paintings. Now, I will ask you which one did we just paint? The one on the left or the one on the right? Well, the one on the left is the one we just painted. The one on the right I actually like a little bit more. That was the one I first did. And when I was painting it, I told you I forgot to turn on <laughs> the record in the last half, and so I lost a lot of the video. But anyway, so I have two sweet little yellow birds in fairy flowers. Now I really hope you enjoyed painting along with me and if you're wanting the full tutorial it is up in my Patreon. Now my Patreon is labeled as couple paint which means basically that two people can paint pictures side by side. Well this is not exactly a couple paint but there will be a sister paint coming soon so that they can be hung on the wall together as if they are a set or a couple. And if you would like another example of a couple paint, and this is parrots in realism, check out the card above. 
and I know that many people are really interested in watercolor painting, I have a 40 minute full tutorial of another little bird in negative painting and it is right here.